Hi, my name is Alex with A Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Jira if you're a Scrum Master. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of the video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover in today's video, please let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do as a Scrum Master is you're going to want to make sure you're in a company managed project. Team managed will still work for you, but the ideal setup and configuration so that you can get 100% of the entire value of Jira is you're going to want to be in a company managed project. And you can tell what they are by looking at your projects here, or if you come to view all projects, you should be able to tell if your project that you're working out of is a company managed one or not. So more specifically, we're gonna want a company managed software project because even if you do any of the business projects, you're not gonna be able to use those because none of those have a sprint board, they don't have a backlog, and they're not agile. So you have to be recommended to be in a company managed software project. Team managed software is my very, very far second but either of those two are gonna work. But for your best bang for your buck, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in that company managed software project. Once you're there, I'm just gonna go into an existing project that I have and a couple of things that I wanna show you and highlight as the Scrum Master. Okay, so I'm just gonna close out a couple of things is, first of all, usually you'll be uh, in the backlog. This is where you're gonna be at least that once every two weeks, at least once at the beginning of your sprint. And this is really where all your sprint planning events take place. So when you're thinking about the ceremonies of Agile, the sprint planning ceremony is mainly going to be done and performed here in the backlog. And so the objective, the objective of you uh, using Jira is to essentially help your team get planned for that sprint, right? You're, you're there as a mitigator, as a, as a conductor, if you will, of helping the team understand what is required of them for the sprint. And in this backlog view, this is where you're gonna take items from your backlog and move them into your sprint. Now, an event that you should be participating in, or at least somebody in your team conducting, is a grooming session with the product owner. So as a Scrum Master, you're not really too worried about that. The product owner is the person that provides the guidance, but as a Scrum Master, sometimes I've seen where the Scrum Master is the one that actually does the movement, but the product owner is kind of providing the guidance. But regardless, you want to come into your sprint planning meeting with a groomed backlog, with the refined backlog, so that when you're planning, all you got to do is essentially take an item from your backlog and move it up into your sprint. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can drag and drop like I just did, or you can right click and send to your sprint. Now, once you send items to your sprint, a couple of things that as a Scrum Master you want to be watching out for here. First, I recommend that during your sprint planning session, and this should be a one to four hour session, depending on, on how big your team is and how much work and capacity your team has, but it's gonna be a quite a good long meeting because even though you already have your backlog groomed, you still want to do the due diligence of estimating all the work that's going into that sprint. And those discussions can sometimes take a minute or two per um, story per task and so you just want to make sure you uh, allocate enough time to be able to do that and uh, so once you're in here as a scrum master I'm usually the one that's driving the meeting I'm usually the one that's kind of has my hands on the keyboard and mouse I'm in the meeting room with everybody else and everybody's kind of providing guidance with respect to the story points and estimation so you want to come in here you will see that you have a dash these are unestimated stories and so the second you start coming into the right hand side here and you go to your story points, you can put in your points and, and essentially once you put it in, it'll show up over here. And now you can essentially just make sure you're planning out your sprint by estimating everything out. And so this is basically what you're doing. You're going around the room, making sure that every story that is in your sprint is estimated. Now an optional thing, now this might be a little bit of a more controversial topic, but I personally don't start my sprints until everything's assigned out. I like to make sure that I have a person that's responsible for every story. They understand that they're responsible for that story. They've estimated that story. They understand the priority. They understand pretty much what the story is about. And if there's any questions, discussions there, 
we're having those conversations with our product owner then and there. But I know in true agile sense, you don't typically assign issues out. You, you're supposed to just let the team be self-organizing. I've never personally seen that in practice actually work. Most people are skilled in a very specific part of the system. And I have uh, over my 10 year career here doing agile, I never really witnessed anybody know how to do everybody's job to the point where you can just cherry pick whatever story, right? So I typically will assign the stories out during the sprint planning just to make sure that everybody has an equal amount of work and that there's no confusion as to who's doing what. And so I am doing the assignments. I only have myself here, so I'm just gonna very quickly assign myself these stories. And so you can just assign them to the right individuals. And then as an added bonus, when once you do this assignment, once you do this estimation, as a sanity check, before you start your sprint, you can actually come over here. There's a view summary of assigned work. You can click on this and it will show you every single person in your team, how many issues are on their workload, and then how many points are basically assigned to them for that specific sprint. And you can use this as a guidance and you can also then compare it back to your your previous capacities and your previous velocities to basically make sure that we're still kind of in the right place. Now, if you need a little extra help, a little extra nudge, uh, and maybe a little bit more guidance, Atlassian has just created this new feature here for uh, Jira called Insights. And if you click on that, it is going to essentially, based on historical data, based on historical performance of your team, tell you in a very Goldilocks manner where you are with respect to your story points. So it'll tell you based on your team's capacity and velocity from previous sprints, are you just right? Are you under or are you over committed? And so this is a great measure to, to maybe understand if you've assigned your team enough work or if you still have some wiggle room or if you've assigned them too much work and it's time to get rid of it. And that's pretty much it for what we're gonna be doing in the backlog. The Once you have all those T's crossed and your I's dotted here, you wanna go ahead and start your sprint. You can actually come and do the goal before and you can come in and put the dates before. All you gotta do is come into Jira and you gotta come to the add date section and you'll see you get the same pop-up. But if you're like me, I usually typically wait to the end, but I already had a sprint goal in mind so we kinda of kept everybody focused during the sprint planning. But once you're ready, you can just come in here, put in the right dates, put in everything that you're gonna do, hit that start sprint button, and then you're off to the races. So at this point, we're gonna be transitioning to the next ceremony as a Scrum Master, and you're gonna be using Jira to help you drive your daily Scrum. So from a daily Scrum perspective, your team is fully autonomous at that point. They're going off, they're basically doing all the great work that they need to be doing, and you as a Scrum Master, you're just watching. You're, you're watching for things to essentially move across the board. You're, you're asking your team during your daily Scrum how things are going right because they're going to be doing the what went well, what didn't go well, and what, what impediments. And having a block column in Jira is one of those things that can help you with those impediments. You can move the issues. Your developers can move the issues to blocked. You can address those. You can part, put them in a parking lot. You can set up follow-up meetings and try to unblock those impediments. You can also be looking out for stale issues. If your team member is consistently just talking about the same problem two, three, four days into a, a sprint, you wanna basically um, identify if there's an additional help that's needed. And one of the cool things you can do within Jira is if you come over to your board settings here on the right, you can come down to, uh, let's see, here we go, card layout, and there's a days and column section that you can toggle. And when you toggle that one, you're gonna get a couple of dots and it'll tell you how long you see here. It'll tell you that this issue has been two days in this column. And so as you move them and as time progresses, these add a couple of dots and they turn red when you really need to go and focus on them. So as a Scrum Master, this is one key thing you're looking for to see how your team's progressing, how they're trending, and if they need any additional help that maybe isn't being surfaced during your daily Scrum. Another tool that you have here to your disposal is yet another insight. This is a different insight, but it's gonna tell you your sprint progress. So if you're halfway through the sprint and this thing is still showing 0% uh, done, this is where you have some red flags, right? This is where you as a Scrum Master, you can start taking some actions and start figuring out why, where things stuck. 
maybe the lead that's doing all the peer reviews is out and so that wasn't communicated and you're going to have a bunch of issues stuck in in review right maybe the built system is down and none of the unit tests are running and so everything's stuck in, in test and then, then again that's another thing where you can go and take an action and try to help get that resolved but the name of the game is to get everything to this done column as best and as easily as possible and this is kind of you're just watching this right you're you're orchestrating this you're surveilling if you will right and you're just monitoring and helping the team make sure that they're taking everything from the leftmost column all the way to the rightmost column now the last thing on here for before we leave the backlog here is to when you are doing your sprint review uh, you you could technically use jira here because in in all honesty and if you're doing this like the right way you wouldn't want to move anything to done until it's past the review although your team should be doing like mini reviews. Your team doesn't have to wait until the sprint review to move something to done. Your team should be able to engage with your product owner, get the blessing, get the feedback um, at any point during the sprint. You don't have to wait till the end, but I've seen way too many teams kind of just put everything into the end test, hold it there, and then after the review, there's a giant cliff, and I'll show you what that cliff looks like. Well, I'll explain where you would see that cliff. and. And that's okay, it's dangerous, because if the review for whatever reason doesn't go well and the functionality of that code doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then at that point you're running into some trouble and it's a little late to course correct, right? Because now you've made it all the way to the end and there's like hours left in the sprint, not days. So I recommend that if you can, and if you have the opportunity, if you have the culture and the team and the, the, the ability to do this, encourage your team to essentially run everything through and test talk to their product owner, get a little demo review they're going, and then move it to done as appropriate once your product owner buys off on it. Then that way you are going to see more of a burn down in the next phase that we're going to talk about here. But if you are waiting until the end, you want to just make sure that your team fully understands what that definition of done is so that they can then move the issue into the done status and then actually call it done. You will not get credit for issues until they all move to done. So if you go and complete your sprint and you didn't finish this out, you are not going to get credit for your issue. So you want to make sure that you're following whatever process you have established within you and your team to get all these issues to the actual far most right column. Because in Jira, if it's not in that far most right column, it will roll to the next sprint. You don't get credit until it's in that farthest most right column. So you want to make sure you're doing that. Once you're satisfied, once you've had your review, everybody kind of crossed those T's and dotted those I's, obviously you're going to have a little bit of work left. My recommendation is don't, don't anticipate that you're going to finish 100% of a sprint. I typically have my team shoot for like 80%. And so at this point, um, once you're kind of satisfied, everybody's taking the credit they're going to take, you can then complete the sprint. And this brings us into the last section here, which is once you complete your sprint, and I'm just going to move all these things to done here, once you complete your sprint, you are then able to essentially arrive at your sprint report or your burn down. And this is the place, this burn down is horrible because I started my sprint a few minutes ago and I just closed it. But yours should look as accurate as possible. And the intent is for you, this red line to essentially hug this gray line as much as possible. And so if you have a straight uh, pan, uh, like plateau, that's not good. If you have any spikes up in your burn down, that's generally not good. And so you want your team to essentially be working and, and closing things out, which again encourages those conversations between your dev team, yourself, and, and your product owner to kind of get things actually closed out and get the credit when it's actually done, not wait till the end. Otherwise, what will happen is you have this giant plateau, and then on your last day, you'll have a giant cliff, and you'll fall off here. And hopefully everything went well, but and hopefully everything passed, but for whatever reason something doesn't pass, guess what? You're gonna have to roll that to the next sprint. And uh, what you can do in, in every day, if you wanted to, you can actually be looking at your burn down. You don't have to wait, the sprint report will be generated at the very end of the sprint, but daily you can come in and check your burn down chart, and this one's giving you some good insight. This burn down chart is telling you how many issues you committed to, the total number of story points, and then as you burn down, as you essentially complete work, it'll show you the points that you got credit for, and then it starts showing you the remaining amount. Additionally, it would also show you 
if you add scope, it'll say scope changed and it'll show you the spike. It'll show you what item made it into your sprint so you can very easily go click on it and get some more information and try to figure out how something got into your sprint after you started it, right? So that'd be something good for you to go and look at. You also get your burn up chart. This is a pretty good one to kind of give you a prediction of based on your team's performance, based on the team's um, current ability to close work out, uh, how healthy are you? Are you gonna be able to finish on time? Things of that nature. And so this is a good one to kind of show you the, the projection of when things will be done. And then the last thing for you to look at as a Scrum Master is your velocity chart. You wanna see how much your team committed to at the start of that sprint and how many points your team actually finished at the end of that sprint. This is a pretty important metric to be looking at. You can kind of see it in this graphical view up here, or you can see it in this more table view down here. And again, here you want to shoot for like about 80% completion. We're not in a perfect world. And sometimes you're not going to be able to finish it all on time. And so an 80% is what I usually recommend. But these are some of the things that you're looking for as a Scrum Master. So there's obviously other reports here. We're not going to be talking about them. I don't really use those all too much as a Scrum Master. And so I wanted to just focus on the burn down chart, the burn up chart, the sprint report, and the velocity chart, which is the four charts you're gonna be using. The last thing you're doing here as a Scrum Master, you're not doing it in Jira. So you're gonna be going into Confluence, you're going to be collaboration tool of choice, and you're gonna be conducting your retrospective. And at that point, you've done all of the ceremonies, you've done all your interactions and, and responsibilities as a Scrum Master, and you're ready to basically rinse and repeat and start the next sprint. So I hope you found value in this video. If you did, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.